Hello, hello. Welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. Today we're going to be drinking Cheetah, a single grain Japanese whiskey. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about this? All right. So this is the Cheetah. It's a beautiful single grain uh, Japanese whiskey. This is a Japanese thing, as you can see there. It is all in Japanese. So mm -hmm. it's our buddy Knight letting us borrow this. He got it over in Japan. Uh, it costs between, I guess, 30 and 40 bucks approximately in U.S. dollars. So, it started in 1972 by Kenju Saji, who was Suntory's second master blender off the shores of Cheetah, the Cheetah Peninsula, and, and is a, the first Japanese grain whiskey that's all they make there. All right. It makes mostly corn on continuous multiple column stills. They actually make three types of grain. They make a heavy grain, which goes through two passes. goes with two. They make a medium, goes through three, and a fourth that's a clean that goes through and most distillers only make the two. They only use two columns, don't use four. So that's another big difference with them. All right. So they use additional thing called dashi, which is a broth in the fermentation process. Uh, and it's, it's also blended into all the Suntory blends. The distillery is surrounded by slopes, hills, and the sea is an excellent fermentation. It's aged there and also at age of Hakushu. They use mostly American white oak. They, use, oh, they also use uh, X sherry and wine casks as well. It was only used in blends in Japan uh, up until five years ago at the Kachibon and Suntory Old, which are Japanese domestic only brands. And now, finally, then now it's, of course, in Habiki and prior to 2015. And they also now make this the only time a single grain is coming out. So the only thing we ever saw on the market here that came from that distillery was the Habiki prior to that. And so we got this one. So it's kind of cool. So this is 43%. This is the uh, Fuku Shinju fifth generation chief blender. He uses 10 different grains to make this, which is insane to make this type uh it is aged in sherry bourbon and x wine in america in american white oak and spanish oak and is wow. mostly sold at convenience stores apparently in chobu japan and some travel retail only locations so it's very okay. interesting very different um so this is our first time with a japanese single grain so it should be yeah. very interesting so we think interesting Ooh. it's very floral Wine finishes in right off the bat. The the berries, mm -hmm. rich fruit. Yeah, I'm with you, Matt. Floral. Yeah, it's like I'm summer sure. blossoms. Yeah. Some, some lemons bit. and vanilla. Like it's it's also salty. It stirs that salty air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honey, wafer, toasted oak. Most also of these are uh, very yeah. bright and, and shiny. Very shiny. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Clean and crisp. It's a calm day looking over the waters. It really mm -hmm. is. Hair and plum. Yeah, this is like a bright, shiny, shiny, shiny day. It's just yeah. really calm and it's a relaxing whiskey to me. I agree. Like it's a lot more fruity than most of the single grains that I've tasted from That's, either Scotland or Ireland. Yeah, especially from Great. Ireland, Scotland. Yeah, it's also got some like plum skins, some pears, some almonds, creme brulee, some. Uh, Vanilla custard. This is a really complex grain. It really most, is. Most grains are very boring, I find. Did Especially you, young ones. This did one's you see that there's an age on this at all? No age no. date. No age. At least not that you can read in Japanese. No, I looked it up in, in, in English as well. It does not have one. Okay. <laughs> Google Translate that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just found the bottles that are in English and read those and doesn't say anything about it. Their so website is not very good, though. Like, they have the most useless website as far as, like, actually talking about their whiskeys. is not good. I don't know. I've heard you say that before. <laughs> and so, it's not pretty. <laughs> Sorry, not I'm, everybody can be Compass Pogs. I'm, I am very... Well, it's not even that. It's like, most liqueurs do a better job than most whiskey brands do on their websites. Gotcha. It's like, come on, guys. Do a better job on your websites. Well, I am loving the smell of this and, and everything really that's good. going on. So. Yeah, especially for 30 or 40 bucks. I mean, mm -hmm. it smells fancy. Because if you get a 30 or 40 buck single grain from Scotland, it's going to be nasty. It just is. Hmm. It's good on the palate. It is. Um, it it's still pretty bright and brittle, especially after you swallow. Agreed. The finish kind it's of still, gets, starts breaking up. It breaks up a lot, but like the, the feeling of the, the warmth is still there it for is. me. Like that part's still growing, but... Like it's it, it's almost like you take a drink and you get all of those great floral and fruity flavors, mm -hmm. and then it kind of just like decides to break up a little bit and it can't decide what it wants to do. No, I, I agree. I get, I get the saltiness and and a lot of honey mm -hmm. on about mid palate and back, 
And then it, it ends with a mm. shininess, yeah. uh, almost metallic, not Jameson levels of, of metallic, but just that bright, shiny kind of finish. And then it kind of shatters the mirror and all the flavors just kind of go everywhere. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, it, it really is interesting. I like it. It's It's got, you know, the dark, rich fruits that we were talking about coming off the wine barrels, mm -hmm. the plum, um, berries, lots of honey or honeysuckle. I get some jasmine. Um, it, it's got a lot going on in the glass. Yeah. Yeah, it's really clean and crisp. Uh -huh. It's plum. It's kind of like, like a dry wine, I would say. Um, toasted oak with some vanilla, mm -hmm. honey. It's got that nice salt. It's got even a little bit of like a tree sap, almost like a maple type of tree sap yeah. from it. Some cinnamon salt, that cracked pepper. It's also got this like minty finish on it to me. That's like minty fresh, like uh, like like almost like toothpaste. Mm -hmm. That kind of minty, fresh, like scope. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting finish. It's slightly effervescent, but yeah, it's. I think it's really good. I really like it. I really like it as well. I can find myself probably getting into some trouble with this in a, on a nice, uh, not necessarily summer day, but maybe yeah. like mid 80s kind of day. Just hanging out like yesterday, hanging out outside. I could probably find myself getting into trouble drinking this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see that happening pretty easily. I think the palate is better than the finish. Um, I think, yeah, it, kind I of think the off. finish is where that $30 price point kind of shows up. Yeah. But it's not to the point that would make me not want to drink it or not want to spend $30 on it. No, to me, it just kind of becomes a background whiskey. Mm. Yeah, it's not as complex as on the finish. Right. right. The right. finish doesn't go on and on and on. It just kind of it drops off a cliff and shatters. It's uh, got nice legs, though, to be honest. It's got really nice legs on it. Yeah, it does. I'm just pretty impressed, to be honest, for... Uh, what for the money yeah for a single grain and young at that i mean i don't know how old i mean it can't be that old just based on the color of it based on the flavor as well i wouldn't put this at any more than maybe three years any younger than three well, it can't be I, yeah. I would say three max okay um i mean it's not it doesn't have that brand new only a year old you know feel to it for me mm -hmm. it's a little bit richer than that for me as far as like the mouthfeel goes but there's no richness there's no depth right there's not, mm. not enough though that i would say that it's past three years i'm gonna go with older just because the color on this compared to um, scotches of that age is much more straw color this is a much more golden color i bet it's more like five to six plus the yeah. wine cast gonna add some coloring it too as well well, well, that's yeah, what I was thinking too. You put some, good. you put some, uh, some Chardonnay barrels in there. That that rich. That'll add that color. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's good. Who knows? Maybe someday they'll decide to tell us, but I doubt it. I so, doubt it because they don't have to. No. They ain't got no we, rules. They do now. <laughs> They're starting to. They're starting to. But this is already done, so they don't got this no rules. True. This is true. <laughs> Just saying. All right. This is actually really good. Mm -hmm. I like it. So thanks again, Knight. Appreciate it. Thanks for letting thanks us Thanks so much. Jeff Jeff cheers. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell so you can hear about all the rest of the fun stuff we have going on. Until next time. Keep on crusading for the whiskey in your glass. Cheers. 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 If you don't know, that was Dozer. Oh,